All right, Ant Walker with SureDog.com here post-fight after UFC 239. I'm joined by Kristen King of Fansided MMA. Uh, so, so Kristen, we saw some really, really crazy stuff tonight. Uh, let's start briefly with the main event. John Jones defends his title against Tiago Santos uh, in a, a five-round affair. The crowd wasn't too pleased with it. What did you think? I, I was fine with it. I don't know why the crowd was booing. I love the technicality of John Jones, so I knew that he wasn't going to rush into anything stupid. I knew that he was going to try and wait and bite his time out and figure out what Santos was going to do because, as we all know, Santos is super powerful. He's going to hit you with everything he's got, and that showed definitely in the fight. I mean, there were some moments where I thought the fight was going to end really soon because Santos blitzed him a couple times, but John Jones is the best at what he's doing. He's tactical, and and he got the fight the way that he wanted, and that's that's all he can do. Uh, just a couple of months back at UFC 235, we saw Anthony Smith fight uh, John Jones, and everyone wanted him to come out with that blitz. Yeah. Everyone wanted him to to just go in there and throw hands and see what happens. And now that uh, Tiago Santos has done that and essentially didn't stand back and watch mm -hmm. John Jones, has that earned any more respect for him in your eyes? Yeah, I think so. I mean, John Jones is really hard to prepare for. I think anybody who is everybody in the light heavyweight division knows that at this point. So even if you wait and try and find the perfect shot, it might not work out in your favor. I think that the range of John Jones is really uh, a huge issue for a lot of the light heavyweights and they just don't know how to deal with it yet and I'm happy that Santos tried to be aggressive but sometimes it just doesn't always work in that way. Mm -hmm. So we, we've seen a lot more movement in the light heavyweight division. Uh, guys like Alonzo Minifield, Johnny Walker, uh, Alex Raykick, there's been some impressive names. Dominic Reyes also comes to mind. Uh, what do you think should be next for, for Jones at light heavyweight? Uh, that's a great question. I'm not really sure, but I like the Dominic Reyes fight. Um like any other mixed martial arts fan, I would love to see that Johnny Walker fight. I think it'd be hilarious just to see what Johnny Walker would do. I think he talked about it a little bit in the post-fight press conference. Um, but I think a lot of these guys, they still need like maybe one or two wins before they can get to Jones. And since he says that he wants to fight again in December, I think that gives him enough time to do just that. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But Dominic Reyes, uh, Johnny Walker, any of those names, I'd really like to see John Jones against. And see, there, there's definitely uh, another thing about uh, him fighting in December. Mm -hmm. um, that gives us enough time for UFC 241, yeah. the heavyweight title fight between uh, Daniel Cormier and Stipe Miocic to take place. So, a lot of options on the table for John Jones, but it uh, should be exciting either direction we go in. So, let's talk about the co-main event. Yeah. Amanda Nunes um, does the unthinkable. Mm -hmm. The double champion moves down in weight to defend the lighter weight class belt. Right. At this point, is it even humanly possible to deny that Amanda Nunes is the greatest female fighter of all time? I don't think it is. If you're not saying that, then something's wrong. I mean, I think she's proved herself so much tonight, and the way that she said she had to switch up her game plan just to accommodate what Holly was doing, because Holly definitely wasn't trying to like engage with her in the first couple of strikes. Uh, so I guess that really shocked uh, Amanda. But she, it, it almost seemed like that's exactly what she planned for. Even though she said that was plan B, it didn't really seem like plan B. It seemed like that's exactly what she wanted to do, and you saw that head kick knockout. And Amanda definitely is the greatest of all time, especially when it comes to the women. Yeah, so a uh, couple good options for Amanda Nunes. Uh, Felicia Spencer and Cyborg are, are fighting very soon. I think that's the next event in Edmonton yes. at 240. Uh, uh, GDR. Mm -hmm. is also fighting uh, in Aspen Land coming up soon. So a lot of options there. Amanda Nunes obviously now with two belts to defend. A couple different things you can do. But let's talk about what everybody really wants to talk about. I think I can guess what that is. Yeah, Jorge Masvidal uh, sets a new record for the fastest knockout in UFC history. Yeah. In five seconds, flying knee to Ben Askren. Um, is there more to say? No, not really. And I think Joe Rogan made a good point on the live broadcast when he's like, I think that fight could have been stopped like at three seconds, but the referee wasn't in position to stop it right away. But man, Jorge Masvidal, he said exactly what he was going to do. But I was, <laughs> I was kind of disappointed that it didn't go like 14 minutes and then the flying knee. But you make history with a knee like that against an undefeated wrestler. You did a hell of a job. Yeah, um, at this point, you know, Colby Covington has to move heaven and earth in order to make good on, on his uh, interim title belt. So we'll see what happens with him and Robbie Lawler uh, coming up shortly. But he's still the interim champ? 
Uh, he says he is. Oh, got it. Okay. So that that's good enough for me. Yeah, I guess so. All right. Uh, also, we had Luke Rockhold making his light heavyweight yeah. debut against Jan Blakovich. Didn't quite go the way of the AKA uh, mm -hmm. product. What does Luke Rockhold do now? Um, I don't know. I think I'm inclined to agree with Dana. I think at this point, maybe it's time to start talking about hanging it up. This was not really the best performance. I thought he looked great. Uh, I was talking to one of the other media members about how he looked physically. He looked great at light heavyweight. I thought this would be a perfect uh, weight class for him, and he just didn't get it done. And uh, maybe it is time for him to retire, but I'm not the one to make that decision. That's up to Luke and his family. And hopefully he makes a decision soon because I think his time fighting for a championship may be over. Yeah. Well, at least we know Ralph Lauren is very happy uh, <laughs> yeah. if, if Luke Rockhold decides to hang it up. Well, well no, his, his jaw is broken now, so they might have to wait a couple of months before they could shoot anything with him now. So, Just not a good night for, for Luke Rockhold at all. Um, also, very reminiscent of the Bisping fight, how dismissive he was of Blakovich right. in the lead up to this fight. And now, once again, overlooking an opponent, finding himself asleep on the canvas. Yeah. Um, bad, bad night overall for, for Rockhold. Oh, absolutely. I think a lot of people are pointing that out, is that he likes to come in with his hands down. I think that is what happened tonight. I'm not entirely sure, because I missed it. But uh, yeah, you can't really do that stuff with anybody, especially someone like John Blakovich, who's like this close to challenging for the title in any moment. That's another name, you know, at light heavyweight. Uh, he could definitely make the case for a title shot. And I just think Luke probably slept on him too much. and. And we saw what happened. All right, All right so uh, the curtain jerker for at least the main card yeah. was uh, Diego Sanchez in the final fight of his UFC contract. Mm -hmm. uh, drops a very, very dominant decision uh, to Michael Chiesa. Does the UFC resign him? Do, do you, do you want to see him fight in the UFC again? I mean, you heard Dana White. He loves Diego Sanchez. He loves all the tough one guys. And uh, I see them resigning him for sure. I don't see Diego Sanchez fighting anywhere else but the UFC. He's definitely going to resign. And same with Luke. Diego's the only one that can make the decision on whether or not he wants to walk away from the sport, resign, whatever it is that he wants to do next in his career. And I just feel like he has this... I don't know, rejuvenation in a sense that he just wants to keep fighting and I, I would like to see him fight again, honestly. I definitely hope that this is a, a step up for Michael Chiesa and he gets a, at least a top 15 ranked opponent at welterweight. Sure. He looks very strong there, um, obviously a, a wizard on the ground. But uh, So we're going to wrap things up, but before we do that, uh, just tell me what your standout moment from the preliminary bouts were. Standout moment from preliminary bouts probably was uh, Yang Sedong's knockout of Alejandro Perez. Didn't expect it to be like that. I thought Alejandro Perez was going to handle it pretty well, but man, that I think it was a right hand, right? The right hand hit him right on the chin, and that was it. I thought that was a very good standout moment on the prelims. Well, that was exactly my moment. So <laughs> off the top of my head, I'm just going to have to go with uh, Cheeto Vera. Uh, oh, yeah. spoiling the debut of Nolan Hernandez yeah. you know a lot of uh, drama behind the scenes with that fight uh, opponents being switched and uh, the the interwoven uh, king of the cage contracts and, and whatnot but but overall a, a great veteran performance by Vera uh, so uh, overall very good card tonight I enjoy myself sounds like you enjoyed yourself too Absolutely. all right so uh, you know you gotta check Sherlock.com for all of your UFC 239 happenings we got plenty of stuff on the YouTube page plenty of stuff on the main page uh, so you can follow me at Ant Walker MMA. And you can follow me at Kristen King MMA. All right. <laughs> so you know what you got to do. Stay beautiful. Stay positive. Stay sexy. I'll see you when I see you.